is kinder against the Rovers. Well, certainly City's goalkeeper is finding his best form lately, denying Harry Willis for one. And Watford's Lee Nogan was next to find Keith Welsh showing the good hands he may need if Rovers are to be kept out at Twerton. And it's Watford's Andy Hesenthaler next to try and beat Welsh, who's had his critics these past two years, but not just lately. Lady Luckmine's a good player when she's on your side, and City finally got their points to end that long losing run when after a Willis shot hit their goal frame, Darren Baisley's effort ended up the same way. Wolverhampton began promisingly and set up Leroy Rossinia. He was close to giving City the lead. But then discipline problems for City as well, beginning with left-back Martin Scott collecting a first-half booking. When Scott's tackle in the second half led to another booking for him, he was sent off under the two bookings rule. But City then held out well with 10 men for the remaining 35 minutes for a hard-earned point. Aggression required in all the City positions, but especially from the midfield ball winners Gary Shelton and Jerry Harrison. No Jackie Jakanowski in the team or on the bench. He is fit, so one way or another the Polish international has not obtained manager Dennis Smith's confidence. Newcastle United with their successful mix of blossoming young stars like Liam O'Brien, Lee Clark and Gavin Peacock and experienced signings who've won big honours elsewhere like Kevin Sheedy and Barry Benison. David Kelly needs to be close marked by the home side. He scored no fewer than 15 goals against the City in recent seasons. So it's Newcastle then in those famous black and white stripes who get today's match underway. Russell Osborne on the ball for City and clearing it. Andy Llewellyn introduced to the defence today. Beresford to Andy Cole. To Jerry Harrison. To Mark Gavin. To Scott. City building the play nicely and only a free kick there. Could be taken by Shelton to Scott. Goal kick. Well, Bristol City have slipped to 18th in the first division table after a run of four draws and a defeat. Newcastle United, first division leaders by 12 points halfway through the season. Cole, Lee Clark to Beresford. To Snernicek, the Czechoslovakian goalkeeper who keeps Tommy Wright out of the side. <laughs> We won't keep him out of the side with many more errors like that. Lee Clark, good ball to Beres with the signing from Portsmouth. That's for Kelly to chase, Osmond goes with him. And that's the first corner kick of the game to Newcastle. They've got good results against the City, of course. 5-0 they beat City at St James's Park last September. 3-0 at home last season and a 1-1 draw here before that. So, City hope to turn that around. Sheedy's cross, well cleared by Wayne Allison, and Matt Bryant chasing there, good bit of aggression there by the young City defender, City's plan today is to try and uh, win the ball, and then get it to their street merchants. Got the avenues covered quite well though. The tackling is working for the city, but a little bit over the top there. Not literally, of course, but uh, over enthusiastic in the referee's eyes. Having a word with the city skipper. Big crowd here this afternoon, drawn by the visit of the first division league. Shelton. Good position by Gavin. Lovely ball to Cole. Can he beat Howie? Well, Howie again did well. 
Cole felt he had to go alone there, but eventually uh, it was three defenders. That was too, too many, especially when Howe is one of them. Robert Lee, good control, good penetration. Kelly. Good covering tackle there, first by Harris and then by Bryant, but it is Newcastle's fourth corner of the match after 17 minutes. We've brought the big centre-backs to have a go at this. Scott and Howie. Howie's got to it. No, City come away with it nicely. Allison to Harrison. So Ben to Chase. Barry Venison covering across. Former Liverpool star. To O'Brien. Venison. Kelly. A man who's got 15 goals against the City in previous matches, but uh, on that occasion, a free kick in his favour. Quickly taken. Too quickly from the wrong place. It can't be taken too quickly, but can be taken from the wrong place. Four, Liam O'Brien, number 11, Kevin Sheedy for Newcastle, both with very powerful long-distance shots. They roll it, they let Venison have it. Played in for Scott, but Allison's done well to clear there. And Mark Gavin with the opportunity to perhaps release Junior Bent speed down the right here. Now he's going the other way. Andy Cole against Howie. Scott on the overlap. Good cross. Great chance. Goal, oh, Wayne Allison. 18 minutes gone. Wayne Allison scores. Lovely goal. And the big crowd love that. Well, you can see as Mark Gavin broke away, he had the option, bent on the right, he gave it to Cole on the left. And once again, Cole with the quality on the ball. Super cross from Scott. Lovely header from Wayne Allison. Just the city one. Newcastle United Bill. Wayne Allison, the hero of Ashton Gates, deputising for Leroy Rosinia, who's on international duty and doing the business. Osman being worn there by the referee and uh, free kick to Newcastle United. Kevin Sheedy renowned with the accuracy of his free kicks with his left foot of his. Trying to pick out one of his big men in the air. And would you believe it, it's that man David Kelly again, his 16th goal against Bristol City in various teams for Walsall, for Leicester City, and now for Newcastle United. So after 21 minutes, Bristol City won, Newcastle United won. Well, City won't be pleased about that, so she is renowned for the accuracy of those free kicks. Kelly stole in, surreptitious goal, but that's what he's paid for. to Beresford, to Howie. Good cool defensive play by Newcastle. Robert Lee. Lee Clark on a good run, but Shelton was shadowing all the time. Good work by the City skipper.
Osman. Kelly, well cut out by Osman. This is Gavin. Lovely ball for Cole. Good running by Andy. Got to take on Howie though. And he's got past him. Oh, what a tremendous effort there by Cole. And cleared off the line by Beresford. Well, that's tremendous attacking in a combined space by a very talented young player, isn't it? Got past Howie there with no room at all to work. And what good covering by the fullback. Fully extended Snerny check. Osman to Scott. To Llewellyn. That's over the top for Cole to chase. Beresford again. What a calm influence he's being on the Newcastle defence. Turn ball for Beresford. But Bryant has won that. But another corner kick. Oh, Sheedy with a different option now. Cleared there by Harrison. To O'Brien. Chance here for Kelly. Back inside for Scott. That's 2-1 Newcastle. What a well-worked goal there. Scored by Kevin Scott. The Newcastle fans celebrate, but that's a bad goal for City to concede. The options will work with the free kick. Beresford and Sheehy in the short corner. The City were a little bit asleep then, weren't they? And finally Scott was left with quite a comparatively easy task to put Newcastle in the lead. 31, you come to United 2. Bent, offside jump, but... Uh, Kelly. Llewellyn to Allison. Cut out by Scott. Harrison. Gavin, good ball. Plenty of room for Scott to operate. Gavin wants it back. In comes Charles Hiver Cole. Not enough power in the header, but good move. And the Cole there. Rising nicely, but he didn't really thump that header, did he? Good coordination between Gavin and Scott. Good cross. Cole in position to score, but couldn't get enough power. Man. Scott. Gavin. Allison, good control. Scott again. And Gavin. City building well, and they won a corner kick. Gavin's corner kick. Three minutes to half time. Up goes Brad. A oh, fine save there by Snurdicek. Well, tech, a textbook corner kick attack there. Gavin's ball in. Bryant strong and Snurdicek acrobatic. Peacock to Sheedy. Well cut out by Bryant. Llewellyn, Cole, oh well done Scott and Harry, Newcastle centre back combining well there, but this is Cole, nice little dummy, and let's rip, why 
Why not? There was nothing else on. The powerful shooting from Andy Cole. And Jerry Harrison with the long throw for City as they move into added time in this first half. This could be City's last opportunity to get level. Bryant's chipping it for Cole. There he is. And my goodness me, that was a bit of a miss, wasn't it? Wow. A real close-range opportunity there for Andy Cole. Did he realise how good a chance he had? Well, whether or not he did, he didn't take it. And so it's Newcastle United, the first division leaders, who lead 2-1, despite the opening goal there from Wayne Allison for Bristol City. City have made plenty of chances. Cole might have got the equaliser. It was only a superb stop on his own line by the Newcastle fullback Beresford that rescued Newcastle. There's no reason at all why Andy Cole and Bristol City shouldn't get something out of this game. So at half time then, in what is a very eventful game, it's Bristol City 1, Newcastle United 2. So City get the second half in motion again then, with a lot to do, but the way they played in the first half, there's no reason why they can't get it back. Harrison to Cole to Gavin to Harrison good play by young Harrison he's a real ball winner these days for City a lot resting on Mark Gavin's shoulders I feel because he's got the skills to keep City pushing forward and setting up the chances Cole has got away from Howie Oh, what an excellent effort and a good play there by Snernicek. Another welcome stuff from City move and Cole's acceleration. Went on his own. Good powerful shot, but the goalkeeper was always favourite from that angle. Oh. And cleared off the way there by Venison. Harrison. And again, it's Cole's effort, but uh, no power on that one either. But Cole, a real handful for Newcastle United this afternoon. Well, Gary Shelton there, the City skipper, needs to keep the pot boiling, needs to keep City moving forward to try and get this equaliser. Kelly, good control under pressure. But he just let it run out. First cut was good, the second one. So Martin Scott for City. Osman. Allison. Cole. Puts it back. Welling to Gavin. Good cross. Snowy check came and conquered. O'Brien. Lee. Well cut out by Osman. Went very well. Today. That little man on the ball there, not done a thing wrong.
Scott. Benison turns. Harrison. Gavin. Benison again. Martin Scott. Mark Gavin. Lovely ball for Ben. Oh, what an excellent opportunity. Julia Ben couldn't quite get his uh, chip on target. Superb vision there by Gavin in placing that ball just where Ben speed would take him, but he couldn't quite steer his effort on target. And that is 7-2 to Bristol City on chances this afternoon. Newcastle will lead by the two goals for them. Foul there by Robert Lee. The right winger who's tucked himself back to defend. So consistent has been Bristol City's attacking pressure. But again, the touch will not take him to the right place. And uh, they're not too pleased about that. Oh, so now there's some chance here for Shelton. Oh, an excellent effort there by Shelton. Excellent effort there by the city number seven. Acrobatic volley, and he's really annoyed he couldn't keep that on time. Really got to keep the pressure on now. They've got to try and smash out an equaliser with sheer pressure because this Newcastle defence is very difficult to prize open. Kelly. O'Brien. Lee. Venison. O'Brien. Howie. And now they've got it back. Alice in the chase, he's over the top. Oh, just wide. That was never an easy chance for Wayne Allison because Scott got himself between the ball and the goal. And when he hit it, it more or less had to go wide. So yet another opening there for Bristol City for Wayne Allison this time as they keep this pressure on. The Peacock. Run it down to the corner flag and trying to get a corner kick or a throw in out of it. But he's got a cross out of it. The city have got it back. Gavin. Wayne Allison. Well, that's a little bit too quick by uh, Hazelwood. Smelly check under pressure. The rain comes down in the closing minutes of this thriller at Ashton Gate. It's, uh, Martin Scott, for Andy Cole to chase, and he's robbed the keeper by sheer speed. And there's a free kick. City can take it quickly, but they can't take it that quickly, and Snellicek is back in goal. And how quick that boy Cole was to make something out of nothing there. Mark Gavin with the free kick. Big Mark Hazel with the subs up there now. Can he lend his height to this one? Up go the big man. Chance here for 14. Mickey Mellon it was with the shot. Well held by Smernicek. But as you see the chance come for Mickey Mellon. The sub hits it well but the Czech goalkeeper is in charge. Mellon again on the run. Not too many people get much change out of that. Beresford and all the, all the city gets in the throw but that's not bad. To Hazelwood, is he going to let rip? He does too, and it's not far out. Good effort there by the uh, City player returning to first team action. Referee checking his watch. Shelton to Cole. Allison. Hazelwood. Martin Scott. Could be City's last, last attacking move.
substitute Bracewell. He's not going to take anything but his time over this. Newcastle have proved themselves uh, expert at keeping possession. It's City's throw. Mr. Burge takes another look at his watch. He knows there's some added time, but maybe not a lot. So Keith Welsh will be required to give this the long kick now. And there is the final whistle for Mr. Burge. He brings to an end a most eventful match in which Bristol City lose by two goals to one. But certainly City made the chances for a much better result. But Newcastle United constantly pierced by that man Andy Cole and by Wayne Allison who got the first goal for City. It was Newcastle United's chance of tagging that brought them the final result. A Bristol City won, Newcastle United two. Phew, what a game. Mark, what do you think? Was it a fair result? No, I didn't think it was on true reflection because I thought City had most of the play. They had the better chances. Uh, Newcastle were a bit below themselves, but I think that was due really to the way that City performed. And I'm certain I see if they keep playing that way, um, they're going to get the results that the performances deserved. Of course, it all started so well for them, didn't it, with that opening goal? It's important to get the first strike. Well, definitely, and actually, it came when they were defending um, in their own half, and the ball eventually broke. I think Liam O'Brien missed it for Newcastle. And Mark Gavin got on the end of it ran forward with it, played a lovely ball into Cole, Cole held it up, and eventually Scott was there on the overlap, put a great cross in, and Alisson hit it back across the keeper. A very well-worked goal. Alisson's finishing form, some consolation to Dennis Smith. Yeah, actually, it, it caused him a lot of problems, Newcastle, um, and if, there is, if they have got a problem, Newcastle, that is, it's they've got a soft underbelly in the centre of defence. And City were very unfortunate, actually, on the run of play. But they do say that you make your own luck in this in this form of football, and, and certainly the luck went Newcastle's way for the equaliser, didn't it? Yes, it did, because um, it was really unfortunate from City's point of view. A free kick whipped in from the right with Kevin Sheedy's left foot. I mean, he hit it with lots, lots of pace. In fact, you know, young Harrison got in there before Kelly, although Kelly would claim the goal, <laughs> and it came off and, and went in the net. But, you know, the problem was for me at City, just, they lacked concentration, they certainly defending the set pieces, which is probably why um, they continue to leak the goals. Yes, David Kelly will claim that one, but it definitely was an own goal, wasn't oh, it? Oh, definitely, definitely. But uh, you feel sorry for Harrison because he's, he's trying to get there in front of Kelly, which he does, and uh, unfortunately for him, he sticks it in the net. <laughs> well, what about the one, the goal that turned out to be the winner? It was well worked, actually, because it came from a corner with uh, Sheedy and Beresford. Lovely play. Eventually, the ball gets transferred out to Liam O'Brien. Uh, sticks a great ball in it. And at that point, it looked as though City had pushed up to play offside, left Kelly in there, simple head across the goal, and Scott came up and... To be fair to him, for a centre-back, he stuck the goal in ever so well, which, which made it 2-1 for Newcastle. Well, all of this in the first half an hour. Were you surprised that we didn't see more goals in the second half? Um, I was, in a way, and yet before actually City scored, there wasn't that much goal-mouth action. And, and from that point on, the game got better, but uh, it petered out somewhat in the second half. But if ever a team was going to score in the second half, it was going to be City, not Newcastle. Newcastle now 14 points clear. Are they that much better than the rest? Um... I'm sure the City fans who saw the game would say no on that evidence, but obviously because of the results, uh, tremendous following at home, it's worth a goal start to them, they've got a great record at home, they slipped up the two previous games away from home in losing at Oxford, and uh, also I think on the road at Barnsley, but they've come back, they didn't play very well against City, they've got three points, and as I say, they're, they're miles in front of everybody. Well, so they march on, but... He should have known. Yesterday, Dennis Smith won a vote of confidence from the Bristol City board, 24 hours later, his 10 months reign at Ashton Gate was over. Enjoy yourselves. Some players were shocked, others quick to offer consolation. At 9.30 this morning we uh, spoke to Dennis and unfortunately we had to make that decision. The board, who sacked Jimmy Lumsden in similar circumstances last year, said today a lack of leadership is behind City's crisis. And we just feel that uh, the, the players needed greater motivation and we feel that uh, the only way at the end of the day um, is, is to change the leadership. And I'm not saying that in, in this point, I don't mean that, that Dennis could not motivate, but sometimes it requires a different motivator to get the best out of players. Dennis Smith, who's just moved into a new home, said today he still hadn't finished the unpacking, here or at Ashton Gate. I think I made decisions which upset a lot of people and, you know, possibly my attitude at the time would upset people in the way that I went around doing it. But, you know, I've always been that way and I'm not, I don't intend to change. 
Smith steered City clear of a relegation dogfight and the new season began well. But signing Andy Cole, he now thinks, might have been a mistake, spending all his money on one player. Rumours of unrest began when Jackie Jakanowski was dropped recently, then 10 games without a win and a spineless FA Cup defeat this week. But should he have gone? Shocked. Shocked, I can't believe it. I think that Leshke should have given enough money to, you know, give him time, sort of things out. Who do you blame? Directors. <coughs> They're the ones that should go, not, not the manager. The man charged with turning the club round is Russell Osman. He's promising big changes and a better attitude. I don't want the lads to go around looking moody or not enjoying themselves. You can't play football to the best of your abilities if you're, if you're uptight and um, not enjoying it. Yeah. Now, I'm a little bit angry, a little bit cross, because uh, my pride's been dented and hurt. Uh, and now I'm determined to be back very quickly um, to prove a lot of people wrong. Osman has less than a week to shape his revival. And what a first hurdle. West Ham away. Steve Scott, HTV News, Bristol. Well, with me now is the former Liverpool star and the HTV football analyst, Mark Lawrence. And Mark, what a carry on. How can you tell a man one day you, he's got your confidence, the next day you say you're fired? Well, it's a dreaded vote of confidence, Bruce. I'm afraid he was smiling about it. But, you know, yesterday he had a job. This morning he doesn't have a job. He doesn't have a job. I think he's suffered so far as he's not really defensively got the side together. Um, they've struggled because of that. But, you know, to be fair to him, it's not just about the results. Uh, it's all about managing the club. He could make probably a million pounds tomorrow by selling Andy Cole. He's had 10 months in the job, which is nothing, Bruce. And it's, well, you know, a month longer than pregnancy, isn't it? It's crazy. That's what you think. But what a reputation the city management must be getting. They keep firing managers. Well, exactly. Um, you know, when a manager takes over, it takes him at least 18 months just purely to get the players in that he wants and to get the players out that he doesn't want. Dennis hasn't even had that time to do it. He's just moved into a house, and I think it's a scandalous decision. So who's going to take over from him? Well, obviously, Russell Osman for the time being. Um, I think the city board will wait and see how he goes. Um, I suppose there's a few candidates in the wings. Joe Jordan could be a surprise to come back. Neil Warnock, who did a good job at Notts County. The list will be endless, you'll find. City were also without a win this year. They could have taken the lead at home to Luton with this shot from Martin Scott. But Luton also had chances to win the game. This, when Phil Gray's header came off the bar. Swindle. Bristol City took one of the worst away records in the division to Portsmouth, where the home side had lost only once. Paul Walsh's early goal making it look as though both teams would extend their record. But Andy Cole released Jackie Jakanowski down the left, and the Polish international's low cross was swept home by Gary Shelton for the first equaliser. Well, Pompey got back on track when the First Division's leading scorer, Guy Whittingham, slammed home his 32nd of the season. Only for City's big central defender, Matt Bryant, to level it again, with a well-directed header from Gavin's cross. And City notched up their first away win since September, when Andy Cole was brought down just outside the penalty box by Chris Price. According to the referee, it was a goal-scoring opportunity and a sending-off offence. And as Price sloped off, City substitute Mark Gavin found the net via the crossbar. And City's caretaker manager Russell Osman could celebrate the first of four away matches this month with a win. Portsmouth 2, Bristol City 3. Jakarski's corner kick, met by Bryant, led to Andy Cole giving City the lead, his 15th score of the season. Southend were to end up with a draw through Stan Collymore's goal, but City's caretaker manager Russell Osman can be pleased with a three-match unbeaten run. The City's point nudges them further away from relegation, but Southend's point puts Rovers bottom. Welsh. But City were fortunate not to lose defender Andy Llewellyn. Booked for that clumsy foul on Tony Smith, he made an even more crude challenge on the same player only minutes later. But Llewellyn was allowed to stay on and he could only admire as Welsh kept Sunderland out. First of all punching clear and then from an Armstrong header tipping over. And even when Welsh was beaten, a point-blank effort from Atkinson, Stuart Munro was in position to save the day and the point for City. 17 goals for Bristol City this season after his half a million pound move from the Arsenal 
has convinced Newcastle to pay a club record fee for him, even by their mammoth standards. Today, Cole was flanked by Kevin Keegan, the Newcastle manager, and the club's multi-millionaire chairman, Sir John Hall, as the North East media welcomed him. It's a great opportunity, it's such a big club, and hopefully I'll come here to do well. What about the added pressure that you are the record signing and have paid so much money for you? Well, it's added pressure, obviously, but I never set the fee, and obviously my goals will justify the fee. Nottingham Forest and two other famous Premier League clubs have seen Cole's goals for Bristol City as worth a million pounds plus. Why did City sell today to Newcastle? It was a very difficult decision, but as you know, um, uh, for now, three months where we've been chased and harassed by various clubs, there's been a tremendous amount of uh, interest in, in Andy Cole, and all along we've been trying to maintain him as a Bristol City player, but there does come a time uh, when the money which is offered, we consider was just too much to refuse. And the reaction to Cole going from Russell Osman confirmed as City's manager today? Very disappointed. You know, the, um, the offer came in at probably the worst possible time for us. Um, the size of the offer has made it very difficult for the, the board to um, make anything but the sort of decision that they have made. Um, from our point of view, you know, he's our leading goal scorer at the moment. Um, I can understand the supporters, they'll probably be a bit frustrated about it. Um, but we'll have to go on and carry on without him for the time being. At St Andrews, Bristol City's decision to give Andy Cole's number nine shirt to Leroy Rossinia nearly paid off immediately. And Nicky Morgan's late inclusion for the injured Wayne Allison seemed inspired. Even though it was a relegation dogfight, City played some neat first-half football. Mark Gavin shot, testing Birmingham. And it was Gavin's quickly taken free kick that set up the winner. Bent back to Gavin. Gavin's cross headed on by Munro. Morgan's header perfectly placed. City's players knew just how important that win might be. City got off to a flyer at Ashton Gate. Mark Gavin's free kick, Nicky Morgan rising high, Junior Bent hammering home. But with City disrupted by injury to Gavin, Watford clawed their way back. Ken Charlery with the one-two with Paul Furlong. Charlery shot past Welsh. With five minutes to go though, a huge slice of luck for City. A Watford clearance rebounding off Glenn Pennyfather. His first goal for Bristol City. At Ashton Gate, Bristol City's all-important goal came from Nicky Morgan. Gary Shelton's cross, Morgan heading home. But Morgan only came back into the City side for last Saturday's away game at Birmingham. He'd scored the winner then, and once again, he headed City to three vital points. Well, those results have hoisted City three places up the table, but they've left Rovers six points away from safety. Rovers take on sixth place Leicester on Saturday, while City travel to the team immediately above them, Notts County, full of confidence after yesterday's morale-boosting performance. City dominated the match against Grimsby, delightful approach work creating a handful of chances. New man Brian Tinian was a constant danger on the left, while Leroy Rossinia, who had another impressive match, typified a confident City performance. The cameras are here, so we wanted to uh, show people that we can play football, and I thought we justified that today. And uh, we played some super stuff. Not much time to dwell on this one, though, because obviously uh, all the games coming up now are vital. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we've said it all along. I mean, uh, 
we can only build on today. Uh, we're not going to get carried away. Uh, we've got a vital game at Notts County on uh, Saturday. If we lose that, we're back in it again. So, uh, you know, it's uh, business as usual. Despite their position, City are determined to play their way out of trouble, confident the results will come. I think we've got to play football. Uh, you know, that's the only way we know. I know we haven't produced it as much as we, as we should have done. Uh, we've now brought, as you say, the scrapping into it, the battling, which you have to do when you're in this position. Uh, but I think we've proved today that we can still play the football that uh, Bristol City are renowned for. And Shelton himself set a captain's example. It was his run down the right and the perfect cross for Morgan that rammed home City's superiority. Lane, Bristol City needed their share of luck against fellow strugglers Notts County. Osman's mistake, but Keith Welch's superb save. It was end-to-end -end stuff from two teams desperate for points. Brian Tinian with acres of space on City's left, eventually bringing the best out of county keeper Steve Cherry with a dipping shot. And City's best chances of winning the match came when Tinian put Rosinia clear. With senior shot agonizingly across the face of the goal, City settling for an away point. The man that nobody wants, Nicky Morgan, converting Wayne Allison's cross. The game looked sewn up when Brian Tinian's shot from the edge of the area beat Gavin Kelly, only for Ian Alexander to illegally block the ball with his hand. Alexander was sent off, Tinian converted from the penalty spot. With 10 men, Rovers still came back and set up a dramatic finish when Richard Evans fed John Taylor to score. But there was no way back for Rovers and City it was who celebrated at the finish. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Up for everything this season. So you think you're staying up this year? Yeah, yeah we're going so right. all the way. Oh, fantastic. 2-1, just what we want. Keep us up yeah. there in the first division. It's a typical derby, you know, not the greatest amount of football played. Uh, when we did get it down, we, you know, we played some good football. Um, but it was, it was a good game, you know, the, the crowd were magnificent, you know, and uh, it just shows you, you know, what sort of support there is in the Bristol area, you know, when they, when they put the minds to coming in support and he did the... Played his trump card yesterday, little junior bent, and he ran the Wolves' defence ragged. His first effort on the turn well saved. Then the man of the moment, Nicky Morgan, who scored three vital goals to steer City away from relegation, skewed one wide. It was often a case of too many passes by City when a long-range effort may have sufficed. And when the ball fell kindly to Morgan again, Mike Stowell saved well. And Wolves eventually managed to clear. In the second half, City again put the visitors under pressure. Good, neat interplay, giving Junior Bent another chance. And the little man showed his great skills a few minutes later when Wayne Allison found him on the edge of the box, the shot again agonizingly wide. City had to wait to the 81st minute to break the deadlock. When it comes to Jerry Harrison, he does try a long-range effort and Junior Bent picks up the pieces to give City the much-needed points. A win would have seen City almost home and dry, but when Nicky Morgan was stretched off, they were without a player who'd done much to rescue their season. Ray Atteveld came on, and in space laid Jerry Harrison's through ball off to Wayne Allison, and when it finally came to Tinian, City were on the road to recovery. But a great solo effort from Bobby Barnes meant the points were shared as he scored from the narrowest of angles. Goalkeeper. City had to survive an equally dramatic crisis. Watch Paul Simpson's shot. It's net bound until the inspired interception by number four there, Mark Hazelwood. Then number five, Matt Bryant with a really fierce free kick, too hot for Martin Taylor to hold, but Wayne Allison fails to cash in. The expensive Paul Kitson was to miss mid-table Derby's best chance. A million pound man ought to have hit the target from that. Finally, in an eventful goalless draw, Wayne Allison could hardly have gone closer to a late home winner, so just the one precious point then for City, who should reach safety during their three remaining matches. 
dull battle at Ashton Gate, but if Wayne Allison had had his shooting boots on, it could have been very different. First well wide, then put through in the second half, firing straight at the keeper. Keith Welsh almost made the clangor of the season as he came out to clear. Matthew Rush's huge lob just the wrong side of the post. Then in the dying minutes, Matt Bryant's double efforts were both saved off the line. It was always destined to end goalless. The dying days of the season, but all to play for at Filbert Street. For Bristol City, one point would mean first division football next season for sure. But home fans knew a win would guarantee them a place in the playoffs. Maybe it was nerves with so much at stake. Gary Shelton almost let Lee Philpott in after only three minutes. City let off as the snap chances blocked. The big danger man was always going to be Julian Joe Kim. Showing his speed here, but the City defence managed to smother that chance and set up a quick reply from Wayne Allison. For half an hour, Bristol were in all sorts of trouble. Leicester's number five, Steve Walsh, a constant threat, heading down to give David Oldfield a chance. But it was Keith Welch who City had to thank for staying on level terms. Not just a remarkable fingertip save, but no chance of David Lowe getting in on the rebound when it sticks like that. All that pressure climaxed with a crisis in the City defence. Again, they were lucky to survive. This time rescued by Gary Shelton's clearance on the line. Ten minutes later, Shelton almost giving City the lead. Gavin makes the chance and the skipper's shot crashes against the bar. Shelton underlining his all-round value to the side, clearing off the goal line one minute and almost scoring the next. The second half opened with an unfortunate incident. Number six, Ray Atavel, tangles with Steve Thompson, then comes charging back. Thompson suffers a badly gashed face and has to be carried off. Real commitment there from Dutchman Atterveld, but Leicester's manager was to tell reporters later that he had no complaints. At least Bristol City had come to life. Wayne Allison should have opened the scoring. This time it was the Leicester defence through Mike Whitlow who was there to clear off the line. And it was their turn to hit the bar too. David Lowe's effort beats Welch and it's inches off target. Nice passing. Shame about the finish. Even with Keith Welch well out of place and the City defence court napping, no one could seem to settle it. It was all enough for the City supporters to break out in a familiar tune. The Bristol Rovers anthem, or at least City's own version of it. And well might they gloat that the gas are going down. With one game left, at last now, City are absolutely safe from the big drop. There seemed to be a more relaxed feel to their football. One touch passing all along the ground and an early opener for Leroy Rossini. Mark Gavin had a tremendous afternoon, so often in the thick of it. Here setting up Shelton, who puts Wayne Allison clear. 2-0 to City. And in the second half, it was more of the same. City in control and Rossini in space with all the time he wanted to finish exactly where he wanted. Brentford were desperately fighting for survival and eventually broke out to pull one back. But by then, it was too late. In a final flourish, Rossini was on hand to pick up his third, City's fourth, and cap what had been a marvellous end-of-season party at Ashton Gate. Final score, City four, Brentford one. Well, that leaves City comfortably placed in mid-table, their flirt with relegation a distant memory. Of course, Rovers knew that they were going down some time ago. Chris Garland played more than 250 games for Bristol City. Last night, Bristol City and Manchester United played for him. He's suffering from Parkinson's disease, and the game proved a fitting tribute to his career. Hughes opened the scoring for Manchester United. 
He made it two after the hard work was done by Dion Dublin. The third came from Clayton Blackmore. As United eased off slightly in the second half, City struck back. Jerry Harrison with the first. Mike Wyatt with the second. And Leroy Rossinia with the equaliser to end a memorable evening.